When I look at treasures in a room or in the player's inventory in my adventure game, I want to see a description of each treasure that's in the list. Well, that isn't quite as simple as it may seem, because each treasure, each object in the list, may be an object of a different type, that is, an instance of a different class, and it may need a different way of describing itself. Look, here's a sample game I've written. Uh, notice it's got a describe method for this thing object, and um, it's got another one for thing holder, and yet other describe methods for other classes, descendants of this uh, hierarchy of classes, the room class, which descends, as you can see, from thing holder, and the actor class, which also descends from thing holder. So they each have their own describe method. I'm Hugh, this is another lesson in my adventure game programming course, and today I'm going to be explaining overridden methods. Now, I've got quite a number of sample projects that you'll see in this lesson, all the source codes available for free download from the Bitwise Books website. The source code was written to accompany my book, the little book of adventure game programming in C Sharp, but you can access and download that code whether or not you've got the book. This is the Game09 sample project. In this I have the describe method in the room class, you can see that here. But what's this green squiggly line that Visual Studio is showing? Well, let me hover over it and you can see there's a message there. You can also see this message down here in the error window. Room.describe hides inherited member thingholder.describe. Use the new keyword if hiding was intended. Let's see what that means. The room class descends, as I can see up here, from the thing holder class. Room has a method, as I've already shown, called describe. But the thing holder class also has a method, you can see that here, called describe. Now in that situation, the method in the descendant class replaces the method in the ancestor class. So here, if I were to call the describe method from a room object, the describe method defined for the room class is the one that's run. So just to make this absolutely clear, C Sharp would prefer me to put the new keyword uh, in the describe method declaration like this. And now you can see that the squiggly line goes away. But in fact, that isn't what I want to happen. And let me explain why. Now imagine I've got a collection of treasure objects, and that collection can contain treasures of various different types. It might have a base treasure, then a, a weapon, um, a magic treasure, and so on. And when I want the objects to describe themselves, I want the specific version of the describe method to be run for each specific uh, treasure type. Here the base class is called treasure, and it has two descendant classes magic treasure, and weapon. This lets me create a list of treasure objects. Here, each object is shown as T. Each T may be either a treasure, a magic treasure, or a weapon. That's because a list of treasure objects might contain objects created from the base treasure class, as well as objects created from descendants of that class. I've created this hierarchy of treasure objects in the overriding project. Both weapon and magic treasure, you can see that here, descend from treasure. Weapon, magic treasure, both descend from treasure, and this is the treasure class up here. Now let's suppose I create three treasures. Uh, let's go into the form1.cs here. You can see I've done that. I've got treasure, magic treasure, and weapon. I create three treasures, one from each class, and I add them to a list of treasure objects, which I call ob list. Now I want to display a description of each treasure. So down here, I write this for each loop, and that iterates through the list of treasures, that is through a list of objects of the treasure class or any of its descendants. In my for each loop, I need to call a describe method for each of these objects. But this may not produce the result I want. Now to understand that, I've written three different versions of describe for the purposes of testing. Let me go back to my test classes to show you them. So I've called these three different versions describe1, describe2, and describe3. And the methods with those names occur both in the base treasure class, you can see here, 
and also in the descendants. So it's the same methods, describe one, describe two, describe three in its descendant classes, magic, treasure, and weapon. Now, describe one is similar to the version of describe that I wrote in the Game09 project that I showed a few moments ago. The base class up here, that's treasure, has a describe one method, and so do the descendant classes. Describe one in magic treasure, describe one in weapon. Now, in Visual Studio, I once again get this green squiggly line because I haven't used the new keyword. Well, describe two is the same, essentially, as describe one. The only difference is that I've added that new keyword to keep video Visual Studio happy, and the squiggly line goes away. But describe three is the most interesting method. Now, as you can see, if I go back up to the treasure class, describe three has been marked as virtual. But if I go down to the descendant classes, I've marked the same method as override. Virtual in the base class, override in its descendant classes. Now let's be clear on how these methods actually work. Remember that my aim here is to be able to have a mixed list containing treasure, magic treasure, and weapon objects. And I want to be able to iterate over that list, as I've done here in this for each loop, and call the correct version of the describe method for each object. Before I put that to the test, let's be absolutely clear on how each of the three versions of describe works. Now here you can see I've created these three objects uh, and added them to a list. So I've got a treasure object, a magic treasure object, and a weapon object. And I've added them to the ob list list. And down here from each object, I've called the describe one, describe two, and describe three methods. Now let's see what happens when I run the code. This is in a form based project and I just run the test by clicking the button. Well, there seems to be no difference between a method that's overridden, describe three, and the methods that are not overridden, that's describe one and describe two. But now let's see what happens when I iterate over a list of treasures, that's using this for each loop down here. I'll reposition this so you can see. So this time I want to iterate over a list of treasure ob objects that contains both base treasures and descendant treasure objects, that is magic treasure and weapon objects. And that's inside the for each loop. And you can see the output here. When I call the describe one and describe two methods in the for each loop, it's the version of those methods defined for the specific class type of the for each loop variable a treasure that is called. The a treasure variable is declared as a treasure object, even though the elvish shield and the battle axe are respectively a magic treasure and a weapon. So the versions of describe one and describe two defined for those classes, the descendant classes, are not used when I iterate with a treasure variable in the for each loop. The methods defined for the specific class, that's treasure of the loop variable, are called in all cases. That's why with describe one and describe two, the elvish shield describes itself not as a magic treasure, but as a treasure. Similarly, the battle axe describes itself not as a weapon, but once again as a treasure, because it's the ancestor class, that is, the treasure class whose method is being executed. But describe three is different. When it is called on each object in the loop, the version of that method that is defined for the class of each specific object in the list is used. That may be treasure, weapon, or magic treasure, not the version that's defined for the class of the loop variable, which is always a treasure object. That's why with describe three, the elvish shield describes itself as a magic treasure, and Battleaxe describes itself as a weapon. So here, the only version of describe that works as I intended when iterating over a list is describe three. This is the only one of my three methods that executes the version of the method defined for a specific object type. That's because describe three is declared as virtual in the base treasure class and the descendant classes then 
override that method by adding this override keyword. With virtual methods that are overridden in this way, c -sharp works out the exact type of the object being processed before calling the specific method. So even though the loop variable, as you can see here, is a treasure object, c -sharp determines the actual class of each object in the list. It then checks if the method is overridden, and if it is, it uses the method defined by the descendant class. That's why I've decided to make describe in my game code an overridden method. So there you have it. This has been yet another lesson in what's becoming quite a long course on adventure game programming. If you've missed any of the previous lessons, follow the playlist which is shown down below and you can use that to watch each lesson in the order, the correct order of the course, so you don't miss out on anything. Now the sample code you've seen in this course comes from the little book of adventure game programming in C Sharp. You can buy that for Kindle or as a paperback if you want to go into more detail. And I have a separate book on adventure game programming for Java programmers. Thanks again for watching. If you've liked this lesson, give it a thumbs up. And to be sure that you don't miss any future videos when I upload them, subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon.